Hi there guys, this is Matt Shaw again, Chief Analyst, NYSERS Trading Academy, with the ninth training video, and I'll just stop doing it wrong and put it right. Now, just after the last video that I've put out, the last training video, I've had two emails off clients that started off really well, but then went down the slippery path. Um, I'm not going to name any names. I'm sure they don't mind me just making an example um, of them without naming them. Um, it's absolutely fine. I did this for two years when I first started trading back in 2009, 2008 and 2009. Obviously, I was trading a long time before that, but when I was full-time trading FX, the first two years, so 2008 and three quarters of 2009, I did a lot of this, and I don't want you to do it. You can skip the first 18 months, two years, one year, three years of art, pure heartache, trust me. Um, and learn the right things from the off. That's why you can use all my experience, all the Knightsbridge Trading Academy team's experience to put this right. Now, this is what happens. This is why retail traders lose money. Now, switching tact too often, and this is typical. This is absolutely typical what happens. You get a trade, you can uh, get in for whatever reason. Now, this can also come from not really knowing why you're getting in in the first place. Now, for instance, the last um, the two trades I have open, now I'm going to add to these when they get on more profits, so I'll build on them. But you know why I'm long Euro Yen, right? It was purely because the last video I put out, I explained why Euro Yen was looking good as opposed to Euro Dollar. Euro Yen is up here. It's looking Euro's looking strong. We have assessed why Euro's looking strong fundamentally as opposed as also as akin to technically. And why that is going to be stronger against the yen and not so much against the dollar. Also, I'm quite bullish Euro pound, but I've chosen Euro Yen because I think that's got more to go. Now I know why I'm getting in. Now when, you, when you're not aware of these things and you don't really know why you're getting in, it's easy to flip back and forth. It's easy to say, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to choose pound dollar, right? Okay. Um, okay. Right. Quite easy. It's, uh, we've got a sloping, uh, trend line here. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Right. When it comes back up to you, I'm just going to sell off. I'm just going to sell this market and we're going to sell back below 135. That may well be because pounds actually, as I said, looking quite weak right now. Um, but if you zone out of that, um, it can say a different picture. Now, if this was to get up and test this line and break through, we could head back up towards that 138 level, 139, 140. Because look at this, we then zoom up to the four hour and look, actually, the market's looking pretty strong, right? It's looking pretty strong above its moving averages, yes, it's come back, it's now testing its uh, particular moving average that I've got noted down there, <laughs> um, and then we could rally back up, it's got a huge gap to cover since the market sold off from the 155, you know, 160 level pre-Brexit, during Brexit and just post-Brexit as well, so there's a huge gap to fill up and around these levels, so if you're looking to sell, you know, the market just off one form of technical analysis, you're going to come unstuck eventually. Now, again, in the immediate term, over the next couple of days, I am more bearish pun. I think we could even see some more profit taken. But overall, over the coming weeks, I think the pound will, in fact, uh, make some headway higher. But I'm only trading for the next couple of days. Uh, I'm only trading for the next couple of days ahead. Now, again, you might look at another pair and come up with something else. You might say, right, okay, um, for instance here, uh, there's a double bottom, triple bottom, I'm going to buy the market off here. I'm going to buy the market off here. In this case, again, could have been the best tact. Euro is looking quite strong, as I said, um, but if you're going off just one form of technical analysis, the market could easily come back up here and then break down through fourth time around, as it's done in other pairs. It's done this in other pairs uh, before now. Let's get an example up. <clears throat> So 
So for instance, just like here, we've seen many, let's just zoom in here, we've seen potential if this was what we were seeing, we've seen double bottoms, triple bottoms, the market in and around trading, in and around moving averages, making these, again, higher lows, which you might say, right, well, that's bullish, it's made a higher low, we've already rallied from this level here, the market's looking strong, it's making these lows, but they're at higher levels, not lower lows, which are making lows at lower levels, which is very bearish, they're making lows here, the market's testing, now it's making, now it's made those higher lows, we're then going to rally on up and keep going, but then look, breaks the moving averages, in line with RSI and MACD, markets then starts to sell off quite aggressively, over 200 pips. So if you're going off just one form without paying any attention um, to your fundamental data, um, other aspects of your technical data, and you're flipping from one form of technical analysis, head and shoulders, uh, just your average support and resistance, um, just concentrating on the MACD, you're looking at just parabolics, you're looking at descend and ascend in trading wedges, you have to decide what you're going to stick to. And this is why we put this in place, checking your fundamental data, checking specific aspects of your technical analysis. And you keep to that, you'll do quite well. Now again, another one is trying too hard or not enough. Now, this does sound contradictory, but sometimes trying too hard and overanalyzing things. For instance, the technical data. You can look at some technical data, the economic calendar, and you could say, right, okay, what's due out? Um, we've got, uh, okay, um, let's have a look. Okay, Trump speaking at 2.30 later this afternoon. Um, this is GMT time, so it's 3.30 UK time you'll be speaking. You could say, well, Trump speaks, oh my Lord, well, okay, if he didn't say anything about North Korea um, or anything else, there could be, you know, a major fallout if, for instance, he's uh, looking towards uh, North Korea and their testing and what that could, you know, spell out for uh the sort of the military industrial complex about what could happen there, the knock on effect for oil, could that affect oil prices if he comes out and says something you know that the market doesn't want to hear? Um, what will effect we'll have that on later in the week because there's a New Zealand election on on Friday that could have reverberating effects to Canada because um, then you know we've got Canadian CPI due out later in the week. Um, <laughs> you know, there's there's kind of a risk off there as well. Dollar Canada is vulnerable to uh, to a better CPI um, if that was to happen. Um, you've got the link there with New Zealand CAD with Japan. Um, so they can go on and on. One can link to another constantly. Everything is linked in the FX market. It's the biggest market in the world, and if you overthink things and you let yourself believe everything can have a knock-on effect, it will affect your trading, it will stop you from trading. And that I've added in web seminars before people come to me saying, Matt, I absolutely feel fine demo trading, but I cannot click the button when I first start because I'm over, I'm over analyzing. I, I think that I'm always going to be wrong. I think as soon as I click the button, I'm going to be in negative purely because I've just missed out something and I'm going to have to cash out at a loss or let it hit my stop loss. That doesn't need to be the case. Yes, you know, there could be issues with what if Trump hints or anything with North Korea. That's why you just stay out of the market. There's an election going on in New Zealand and then we've got uh, German elections as well later on um, this weekend. Now, you just stay out of the market in that case. You just wait and see what Trump says. You stay out of the market mid-afternoon, again, half an hour to an hour before, do not touch the market. And if the market is acting wildly, just stay out of it for the rest of the day. Come back the next day when everything is factored in and start afresh. The election is going on the weekend. Again, close out early Friday, come back Monday and reassess. You don't have to overthink things. The not trying too hard enough, if not hard enough, is again just not doing what I'm, I'm explaining here, and that is purely checking your fundamental data, checking the calendar every Sunday evening for the week ahead or every evening before you go to bed for the next day. 
for instance, we're here now on Tuesday, I'll check Wednesday what's due. Um, we've got retail sales month on month for UK. And then we've got um, FOMC economic projections in the US and F FOMC rate decision, highly anticipated. So I already knew that was going to be there, but I did forget the existing home sales. That wasn't in my head. I, I, I can't have everything in my head of what's going to come out the following day or the following week. So that just reminds me to tread carefully in around one o'clock. So it's that extra few minutes of homework, checking the, check the technical, obviously aspects as well. Again, reasons why I like Euro Yen, spoke about this before, and why I see the trend continuing against the Yen as opposed to the dollar. Checking those technical aspects with the fundamentals is indeed trying hard enough, but not too hard. It's the perfect balance. Again, too high leverage. Now, perfect. People have so much trouble with this. Say, Matt, what the hell where do I start? Do I risk 3%, 2%, half a percent, 5%, what? I say don't go over 3%, start with a half a percent, work your way up. Now, this is 1% what I've got here on Euro Yen. It's just one lot. It's a 30 grand or thereabouts, thereabouts account. It's only a demo account trading with Infinox right now. I'm still uh, testing the <clears throat> uh, actual account. I'm going to be depositing more money with these later on. Um, in the month, but I'm still, again, before I do that with any company, I always demo trade just to test out a few things. But as a newbie, I never suggest demo trading because I always say start very small, even if it's with point one of a lot, with pound a point, 50p a point, purely because you need that mental aspect of trading with real money. Because let me tell you, there are plenty demo millionaires out there, but when it comes to trading real money, they do not stand up. Trust me on that. Now, <clears throat> one lot on Euro Yen. Again, remember, one lot is equivalent to 100,000 of the currency in the market. So, one lot is roughly $10 a point. As you can see here, I got in at, we got in here at 133.83. The market is now 82. There's what, seven pounds on down right now, which is equivalent of $10, okay? So one pip is about seven pounds, which is $10. So $10 a pip. So where do I put my stop loss? I put my stop loss pretty much 30 pips below. It's 29.9 actually, but it's pretty much, let's say 30 pips below the current price of 83. So my stop loss is down here, the red dotted line, as you can see, that is my stop loss. I wanted to do it around 1%. I wanted it below this move and average, and I wanted it below this pivot line as well. So I'm, I've got a few obstacles in the way, plus that is 1%. So potentially 300 pounds I'm risking, but a 30,000 account, that's 1%. That's 1% on that trade. Now this has got the potential to go much higher than 30 pips north. Um, the momentum is there. We bounced off the move and average. It's looking, yen's looking weak, as we went through in the previous video. Euro's looking stronger. Good fundamentals on that. Now I'm looking for this to push maybe 50, 100 pips higher. So my risk reward favors uh, the risk, um, does not outweigh the reward on this. The reward potentially outweighs the risk. The risk is limited. I'm protected there 1%. I can't lose more than that. I've also got a gold trade, which I'm just testing a slight uh, strategy on that, which I won't go into detail on this. But again, I've not got a stop loss, which I would have with real trading, but it's not. So I'm just testing, letting that do its thing for now. But the maximum risk on that is actual 1%. And that is trading, let me say here, I'm trading just over a three and a half to one leverage. Now why I work that out, purely is when you trade one lot, again, that equates to 100,000 of currency in the market. Obviously, you've got the leverage of using 100,000 worth of currency in the market, just with trading one lot and risking, in this case, 300 pounds. I could risk 200 if I put my stop loss at 20, or I could put my stop loss at 10 and just risk 100. But really, I would be foolish to do 10 points because the spread is nearly two pips and then 
you know you factor everything in it's not much of a gap or much of a margin of error so with that being a hundred thousand in the market this one lot I'm actually got you look at your equity balance and my equity balance is just under thirty thousand let's call it thirty thousand right just under twenty just under thirty thousand that's three point three to one isn't it leverage so I'm trading a hundred thousand if I was trading ten lots it would be one million so then I'd be trading thirty three to one leverage some accounts some discount brokers offer 500 to 1 i mean it's ridiculous you wouldn't want to be trading you know 40 50 60 lots on a 30000 pound account because then if you add your uh, stop loss at 20 pips that's 600 dollars a point <laughs> the 20 or 30 point stop loss you're risking 12 to 18000 <laughs> pounds which your account is only 30,000 anyway. So you would hardly want to trade 50 to 60 lots, would you? That's crazy, absolutely crazy. But trading one lot, I mean, you can trade 50 to 60 lots if you had an account of say 1 million or 1.3, 1.4 million. It wouldn't be then so crazy, purely because your leverage would be in tow. Now, again, if I put two lots, that's 200,000 of currency, so you're looking then from 30, you're looking just again over, just under seven really, six and a half, 6.6 6 um, to one leverage. Again, I don't tend to go over 10 to one in leverage, sometimes 15. So on that, if it was to be sort of 15, I could go up, say three, that's 300,000, that's 10, or five, that's 500,000. And that would be about 15 to one if I was to do five lots. So that's fifty dollars a point on there. Again, if I'm trading twenty pip stop, that's a thousand dollars I'm risking on a thirty thousand sterling account. So it's slightly less than three percent I'm risking. Again, that's not that bad, but I wouldn't, especially to start with, go that high. One to two lots is all you really need to do on an account this size. If you're trading again with thousand dollars or two thousand dollars then you can look to go 0.1 lot uh, you can even go 0.08 0.05 you can go as low as you want but as long as you do the math that we can get a calculator for you guys to use and um, you can work out your exact risk reward what lot is you should be putting down as per your account balance so again knowing the leverage and knowing your risk. Now the biggest one of all, trying to make up for previous losses. And I just mentioned this earlier on about not getting a trade for the sake of it, purely just to make up because you potentially missed out on an opportunity. Like for instance, if you missed out on the pound rally, I know plenty of people that have done this, trust me. You might have missed out on this huge rally after the Bank of England. And you might think, oh, right, okay, oh my God, look at that, I missed out on 400 pip rally right that's it I'm going along and generally when people do this try and make up for previous losses or missed opportunities which is the same thing some people see it as which it's not someone may then go along here they might come later on the Monday and think right I missed all this I missed making 400 pips I missed all that now I'm gonna go long and I'm gonna for double the amount, I'm going to go two lots instead of one lot. Well, actually, the market's already done all the work. And again, generally after three, four hundred points, it's due for a pause, maybe before the next leg up or for a reversal, but definitely a pause. The market then could at least come off, and then you're holding the baby with more lots on the table and more risk, and it's due for a sell off. And that's where then people, by trying to make up and double up, make up for losses, they start trading with emotion and it gets messy. It's not needed. Whereas if you've missed out on this, you think, right, oh, damn it. Well, you know what? The opportunity was there. That's good. The market's given me opportunities. I'm going to reassess where I am. I'm going to see where we've come from, recheck the fundamental picture, see what the headlines are saying about pound right now, check its counterparts, i.e. euro pound, pound dollar, dollar yen, pound yen, check the currencies interrelated, and see what they're doing and then assess well hang on this market temporarily could be due for a sell-off if indeed it passes XYZ criteria so you don't need to try and make up for previous losses that's something 
that a novice does. What you need to do, use all of what you've learned so far regarding the news flows and all the data checks, the fundamental data checks, which is what we've gone through before. You simply check the calendar, like before you check ahead, what is there, what's got the three balls, you stay away from the hour before and the hour after, or 30 to 60 minutes, and you wait for things to settle themselves, and then you get back in and reassess the picture from there. Again, the headlines. Check the headlines. What's out there right now? That's the same person writing these, but we've got, again, oh, Toys R Us filing for bankruptcy protection. Didn't know that. Um, you see what's out there. Again, the Eurozone construction as we just went through in the previous video. You check all these. Go through it. What marries what in regards to technicals and fundamentals? Reassess risk management. Again, we've just gone through that. You need to precisely, precisely look at your balance. Look at your balance. What is it? In this case, it's 30,000, just, just under 30,000. I'm not going over for 1% risk, one lot. Not doing it. If I want to risk slightly less, I'll go 1.5, but I'll only risk to risk 300 pounds. I'll just go with a 20 point stop loss. Now this is a demo account. I will sell this because I think pound might come off short term, as I did say. So current price 135.06. If I sell, I'll go 135. 30, 26. That's 20 point stop loss. So I'm now selling pound dollar. At 135.06, stop loss, 135, 26, 20 pips, size 1.5. So again, ultimate risk, 20 times 1.5 is 30. So really that's 300 pounds risk on a 30,000 account. Again, always realize that you're risking 1% of the time. It's not the overall risk. You've got 1% risk on that trade and on this trade. Ignore the dollar sorry, uh, gold dollar, ignore that for now. Going by the two currency pairs, you've got 1% risk on each. So remember that. Last but not least, okay, well, semi-last, master the psychology. Again, do not get roped in. You must not get roped in to want to trade after you've missed out on an opportunity. Big results come out, um, you know, huge results come out like uh, interest rate hike unexpected, um, building permits, you know, smash expectations, um, retail sales, President Trump saying, yeah, we're going to bomb uh, North Korea tomorrow, and markets are in complete meltdown. Well, if that was the case, you'd want to just get running anyway for the hills. But if it was something gorgantuous, don't get caught up with the crowd. If you see huge moves on your charts, you then still stay away. You don't have to get involved immediately. You let that market pitter up. Let the market... Uh, and the noise pitter out over the following 30 to 60 minutes. That is crucial, okay? Again, double check your tech. Why am I in? Am I in the right levels? I've just got in, I'm just about to get in. The Euro, yen, yeah, Euro has confirmed a nice bottom. Continuing the trend. Obviously, you've checked your fundamentals anyway. The tech looks good, still above its moving averages. There are one or two other aspects several other aspects we go through in the training and the training days. You check the different time frames um, to check for different things, which I've already done before this video, and you make sure they're all in the line, and you then go with that. And again, practice is all. Keep going. If you go on holiday, still check the market. Still keep in line with what's going on. Don't uh, don't you know? Simply detox and then come back, and then it's a huge shock to the system, and then you've got to start all over again. Keep in tune with the markets. Again, the best way of doing this is to log on every morning, check the calendar, just check the news, turn on Bloomberg for 10, 15 minutes, pick up things that are being said, and practice the trading. Go over your technicals. Go over your fundamentals keep finely tuning your trading because like with any art and trust me trading is an art practice is key all right guys i'll leave it there thank you very much